Page 21, Symphony Number 101, The Clock. This is a theme from the second movement of that by Haydn. Now watch out when you're reading this page, like on the previous page, page 20, and you're reading that information. They give you a timeline on the bottom, or on the, on the left side there, and you're reading all the stuff. It doesn't line up necessarily, the words to where it is in the timeline. Don't, don't think that those things happened at the same time. They didn't. For instance, if you look over here on page 20, and you go down to where it says Renaissance, and you go across, and you see the word harpsichord. The harpsichord was not replaced by a piano in the 1400s. That didn't happen until the 1700s. So those don't line up, so be careful. This whole page here, the words, apply to the classical period, which is right down there, they label it classical. So that whole page actually applies to that. So don't think those things line up, they don't. 4-4 four, four time with one sharp, so it's either in the key of G major or E minor. Well, look at the end, the last measure, you're down here. G major, standing on a G major chord, so I'm guessing that's it. Right hand first. Second measure when the right hand comes in, it's a two and a one and a five. So you're here to start, but you won't stay there very long because right there, you immediately need your third finger on that for the dotted rhythm. So first, get the notes in the fingering. So we're here and then here, and then you're coming down and cross over. Don't forget the F sharp. And you lift up and move during the eighth rest down here. The fourth finger on the last note. And thumb under. Thumb under again. This puts you in position to do that again. Last measure of the second line, you gotta come up fourth finger up a high C, and then you're coming down fourth finger on the F sharp. Third line, you're right in this pen. Fourth line, you ended the third line here. And then the fourth line, they went second finger there. That's a, I mean, you can, it's between phrases you can lift up and move, but you don't need second finger. Third finger will do it. You can scrunch up and get third finger on that. You can actually even use fourth. But you need a thumb on that D, the next note. So it's if you use fourth, you're coming under. Third is a little easier. But second, to me, is scrunching up too much. So I recommend third finger on that C sharp. And then you're coming up. It's a D major scale, actually. And then come down during the rest. You're here. And then the last line. You're here. Here, and then here. Fourth finger, third finger, reach down. So the idea is I try and figure out a fingering where I can play the whole thing pretty much legato if I want to. Can't always do that because there's moves involved, but I do what I can. It helps me to feel these, the flow of the line of the melody or counter melody or whatever it is. Then I can go back and add the rhythm. At the top, one and two and three and four and see the, the sixteenth notes are between the one and in between those one e and the two e and the set. So it's four and one, four e and a one e and a two, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. Just make sure those dotted rhythms are dotted. It's better to be on the short side than the long side. Don't turn them into triplets. One and no, the the sixteenth note's got to be shorter than that. And two and like so, so in the third line especially, those sixteenth notes got to be short. Through. 
left hand, quarter notes, third finger, last measure of the first line, third finger and the thumb down. Like so. Third line here, and then here, and then third finger. Fourth line. Actually, that's a, G, a D major scale. If you can do the scale, this is easy. If not, the struggle. One and two and three. One E and a one E and a two E and a three. You come up, treble clef. I use second finger on the A. And then just come down the scale. One on the E. That's a C natural, huh? They're saying 2-4, you can do 5-3 if you want, it doesn't matter, because then you just come down one more. Try putting the hands together. It's nice to have these quarter notes in the left hand to keep the beat. Don't hesitate, don't mess up the flow of the beat, it's got to be there in that third measure there. Together. Whatever speed you're going, I mean, this is a it's kind of a slow piece anyway, but keep these quarter notes in the left hand steady. This is the tick tock of the clock, I'm sure. And then the right hand. Ah, da -da 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 -da. It's got to be in time with these quarter notes. Second line, last measure, look out, you're here. That may take some extra. You just have to practice that till you can flow that down. Sort of get it, you don't have to go that fast. You can sort of get it and it's flowing okay, and you got these tricky fingerings worked out. Put in the articulation. This is a nice light, just a nice light wrist to cuddle. I'm on the key and I'm pushing down and bouncing off. I'm exaggerating, it's actually a small move, but that's the idea. Here, I don't know if it's an error or not, but in the first measure, the second line, those left hand notes are not staccato. That's staccato on both hands. The third line, that is left, the wrist staccato on the left hand. the rest of it. Then when they, you can sort of do that okay, try the dynamics. It starts out medium soft. Now there's two ways of looking at this. You can say okay the accompaniment is medium soft. It's staying there. That means when the melody comes in, it's got to come in a little louder, like medium loud. You can say medium soft applies to the melody, and since there's no melody in the first measure, then the accompaniment does it. But then in the second measure, when the melody 
comes in, that's medium soft, and the left hand has to get softer, just immediately, just drop. Like so. Or you might look at it like at the beginning on the medium soft, moderately soft. That would apply to the melody, and since the beginning is not melody, you'd automatically play that softer than that. So you just automatically play this soft. So this would be soft, now medium soft. Then you get down to the third line, third measure over, you come up to medium loud. And then echo that, it's a soft. Third line, now you're loud. That's the right hand that's loud, not the left. The left hand is sort just sort of a medium loud or a little less on that. And now medium soft to the right hand, left hand soft. Last line, sort of loud. Now sort of soft. Those quarter notes are not staccato, those are. That's the piece. Then you can consider the tempo or the speed. On Dante, it's a nice strolling speed. Then that's just what do you think? This don't don't play it fast because however fast you got going, you got all those sixteenth notes to deal with. So keep this as a nice steady piece. Work it up and turn it into music. I like to do a play with me slowly here just to double check the notes and the rhythms. I'm not going to do the dynamics, but we're going to go really, really, really slow because of the 16th notes. I'll give us four counts and let's try to play it together. Just make sure you have the right notes and rhythms and all that. One, two, three, Ready and go, and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and Rest in. 